How's it going everybody? So to kind of move away from fighting games for a bit, we recently had the Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition released for the Nintendo Switch. I've been playing it on and off and I love it. This is actually my third time buying the game. I'm a pretty big Xenoblade fan after all. Now here's the thing. When this version was first announced, I was kind of disappointed. Not because of the game itself, but because it wasn't the Xenoblade game I wanted most to come to the Switch. And that game I'm talking about is Xenoblade X, uh, back from the Wii U, which came out around the very end of 2015. Even though I'm happy we got the first game on the Switch, I still really would like this game to come over as well. So in this video, I'm going to talk about five reasons why Xenoblade X needs to come to the Nintendo Switch. These are in no particular order, but let's get started. can help get a character from the game in the Smash Ultimate or, or a future Smash game. Now, knowing with my love of Smash Bros and fighting games, there's an inevitable reason like this was going to be on the list. Now, even though this is probably the least important reason, it might be the reason that it involves the most. So in Smash Bros, we got our favorite Nato Boy, Shulk, which is awesome, one of my favorite characters in Smash, period. Now, the common next requested character from the same late series is Rex, or Rex and Pyra. Now look, Rex is fine. I wouldn't necessarily be mad or disappointed if he, if he or them were the next characters in Smash from Xenoblade. But I think it just irks me because I think someone from Xenoblade X would just be so much cooler. Generally when it comes to the character that, that would make it in from X, the character that comes off the most is Elma. She's kind of the main character if you're not counting the Avatar character that we play as. I really like Elma. I think she is a sick design and would just have a really sick moveset. I also think she would just be more unique, or at the very least more unique than Rex would be from Shulk. Now I think would be a bit Bayonetta or Joker-ish, so I don't want to act like, you know, she wouldn't, there wouldn't be like anyone else like her. There is the chance that they would just pick Cross, I guess the name for the Avatar character from X, since Sakurai loves doing that as we've seen with Fire Emblem, which wouldn't be terrible, but definitely less exciting. Now I think the main reason that Elma is nowhere near as requested as Rex is because less people played her game to know or even care about her. And I don't think it's a matter of people not liking X, because if you look at the Metacritic scores, X is actually slightly higher than Xenoblade 2 in both, I guess, the critic and user score. I think it's just that way less people played the game, so they're just going to go with what they know as opposed to what they don't know. I personally would prefer Elmo anyway, even if I never played X, but I'm not most people, so it's whatever. There's always the chance that I'm wrong and people flat out just don't like her, and they just like Rex and Pyro more. But why not give them the chance to make that decision? Putting this on the Switch will help with that. Nintendo tends to like putting characters that are relevant in Smash, which can sometimes be really annoying, to be honest. Putting Xenoblade X to the Switch will increase its relevancy. And look, people are always saying they want more female characters. Well, you got one right here with Elma. She's badass at that. And she might even be considered a person of color, uh, which many people have asked for as well. Though I'm not 100% sure on that, so don't kill me if she's not considered as that. Lastly, I feel like people tend to be turned off by spin-off games, and seeing a number next to a title gives the game more, I guess, importance. I personally find this silly because some of my favorite games are spin-off games. Not to mention, but Xenoblade 2 is even really quite a direct sequel to the first, though it might tie in a bit. But um, but that's about it for this. Uh, sorry this one was so long-winded. All the Xenoblade games will be on the Switch. This one is kind of self-explanatory. All three of the games for the Switch will be on the Switch if this game gets ported. Everyone that owns a Switch will have access to this whole series, so, so far at least. Now, people have suggested a Xenoblade X2. Or X squared, heh <laughs> math jokes. But that's all well and good, but wouldn't it be kind of awkward to have the first game on a system way less people played it on? Like, I'm not saying every, everything that has a sequel on the Switch must have the previous game on the Switch as well. But this game was on a Nintendo console so close to the Switch coming out, so why not just throw it on there? Especially since graphically, at least, this wouldn't take nearly as much work as the first Xenoblade would. I mean, I still think this game looks gorgeous, and, those, and no disrespect to the Switch, but the graphics jump wasn't nearly as big as, say, the PS3 was to PS4, so it should be totally doable. Now, will all the Xeno games be on the Switch? Sadly, no, but that's a tale for another video. 
Having the game portable may make it easier to get through. What I mean by this is that the Xenoblade games are pretty long ass big games. I feel like with RPGs having the option to play them anywhere makes them a bit easier to play and make progress in. With a game on the Wii U you can only play at home or at least on a TV. Having the option to take it with you may make it easier to progress and may maybe actually even beat it eventually. Granted the game would still probably look the best on TV, but it's having the option of a portable as well but I think let people experience its uh, vastness a bit more frequently. Can give the game the chance to fix some issues. Now it's been a while since I played this game, so it's a bit tough remembering the things I found wrong with it. I think one problem that I think others had as well was something with the side quests. The game wanted you to, wanted you to do side quests a lot, and I know I got jammed up doing one and I and I couldn't progress or something. I don't remember exactly what happened. I do remember it involved the side quest. There I think was issues maybe with the online as well. There was also some issues with the story or at least not being as strong because the main characters were, you know, the main character was just an avatar character. So I guess the narrative wasn't quite as strong as say Xenoblade 1 or 2. But I don't think you can really fix this without heavily altering the game, unfortunately. I think there was some censorship issues in the US as well. And they could change this, but after Tokyo Mirage Sessions on the Switch, I don't know if they're going to address this either. Regardless, any of the other complaints that X may have had could very well be addressed in the Switch port. One of the last Wii U exclusives still stuck on the system. Now, full disclosure, I had and enjoyed the Wii U. There were some good Nintendo games on it, it just but the gap between them releasing was kind of large. Now I don't usually get third-party games from Nintendo since I usually have at least a current PlayStation console at the same time, plus usually the third-party games aren't the best anyway. At least after the GameCube era that was. Now a lot of the Wii U exclusives have thankfully made it to the Switch. There are three that I like at least that still haven't quite made it. And they are Super Mario 3D World, Star Fox Zero, and of course Xenoblade X. Now we basically know that Super Mario 3D World has come to the Switch. I'm just putting it here just because it's not official yet. But getting Xenoblade X will we'll just will just save another Wii U game from perdition. And look, I mean we got Tokyo Mirage Sessions on the Switch from the Wii U. And that game I feel like had a lot more negativity and controversy surrounding it than Xenoblade X. So by all means Xenoblade X should definitely get it as well. And also not hating on Tokyo Mirage Sessions, I actually really like that game. I could probably come up with more reasons, but these are the main ones I thought of. As for as far as likelihood of this game getting ported, it sounds like it's likely, just maybe not right now. Uh, because Monolith Soft is currently working on a new IP, and the answers they're given to a Xenoblade Extra Switch is just kind of like a, we'd like to, it's just not on the cards right now. I think they just have to work around some of the Wii U specific features, like managing the nav on the gamepad, and I guess the online multiplayer. Which sucks because I'd really like it, but if we have to wait, you know, we have to wait. I still have the, the first and second game tied me over anyway. By the way, I should say that while I don't know if I like X more than the first Xenoblade, I do like it more than the second game. I love that the graphics and art style are more like Xeno Saga and another Xeno series I would really love that I'd love to see on the Switch. But that's about it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Do you want to see Xenoblade X on the Switch? Do you agree with my list? Do you have your own reasons of your own? Let me know, I'd love to hear them. Oh, also, you might have noticed that I shortened my intro. This isn't necessarily permanent. Um, I'm just kind of experimenting, seeing which kind of which people like better. The more quick, brief intro or the long, long character select screen. Um, you know, I am worried some people think the intro is too long and don't want to watch the rest of the video. I, I am concerned that's a thing. So this is just kind of experimenting. Let me know what you guys you know, like more, the short one or the longer one. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for checking out this video. And as I always say, another time and a place. Keep being awesome.